Okay, guys, Black and Black is back again. So, <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and re uh, recap some stuff I did off camera. I went ahead and attached the other arm, got it into a pose that I liked, kind of at the ready sort of pose, getting ready to make take a swing, maybe a defensive kind of stance. I went ahead and made up some more of the brown color, or the mustardy color that we've been using. Um, it's been trimming up some edges with it, really. Uh, maybe hard lining a little bit. Um, nothing real major. Uh, I went ahead and base coated the smokestack that color. I wanted a copper color. I originally wanted it to be a copper color. But then I got to thinking a little bit, and I thought to myself, I think this would look a ton better with this color, with more of this color. So that's what I went ahead and did. Just took this color and threw it on very quick and very easily. And as you can see, I'm just kind of putting another layer down on the shield. Oh, damn, that's really ugly. Somebody didn't mix the paint well enough here. That would be me. Got a little bit of yellow color showing through. Not more. It's the. Uh, it's in reality the. I have a brown that kind of is the part one mix. And it showed through just a little bit there. So it hadn't been maybe mixed in well enough. Still showing a little bit. Just gonna kind of mix it in there a little bit better. Okay. But like I said, I had uh, went ahead and did the smokestack in that color. We have to weather the entire back end once again, this engine. But we'll get to that in a second. We do have these under plates here. There's two of them. You can barely see the second one. We need to hit those with the brown. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll start with the right hand one. Mustardy brown. And this is pretty easy. The holes aren't very deep, or are actually very deep, excuse me. So it's really easy to, to get around them. I don't have to worry about that too much. Of course, they will be weathered later too. So it's pretty okay if you get a little bit of the mustard in there. This stuff does cover very well. So I'm not really worried about black showing through. And once again, these things will be pretty heavily weathered too. So if black shows through, it won't be that big of a deal. If it like I was the undercoat of white, if we had done a base coat or a primer of white, that would be a problem. So if that showed through, that would be, break your immersion pretty fast. Like I said, got the other arm on, got that base coat on, touched up a couple of edges. I went ahead and hard sealed the model with a dull coat lacquer. Be sure you use a dull coat. If you use most standard lacquers are a gloss coat. And I remember going over lots of times before that you will make mistakes in the hobby. Lo and behold, I made kind of a big one. I went ahead and accidentally gloss coated this whole dang thing because I am apparently incapable of reading before I spray stuff. I do have a, a tendency to gloss coat stuff and then dull coat over it just to add a layer of protection. The gloss coat I find is sometimes a little bit more resilient. So it was kind of beneficial that I ended up accidentally doing that because I went over it with the dull coat anyway. Um, but that was a mistake I made. I am certainly not beyond making mistakes. I'm just going to go ahead and work ourselves right around the underside of the second right hand side. Or left hand side, pardon me. This is his left hand side. It's 
pretty tough to get to the farther I go in. Let's see if I can zoom for you. I want to rest this on the ground or on the table rather so that it's you know, just lick the brush that I used to mix the paint with <laughs> again. Um, I want to rest this so it's easier for me to work with. So hopefully you can see this. I'll try to zoom in a little bit for you. Yeah, you can see it pretty well. Just working my way around, real short strokes. This uh, underside here doesn't have to be as clean and crisp because not a lot of people are going to see this. And on top of that, it'll get weathered. So there's a lot of factors that are going to keep people from seeing this and really expecting tons out of it. Do you have one spot that's kind of in a very awkward place? Let me see if I can put the brush in there. Real carefully. Dab it in there like so. Kind of get the underside. There we go. Cool. And of course, I'm going to know it's there, so I have to get it. There we are, though. So both plates, or I like to call them exhaust ports because that's what they look like most to me. Most exhaust ports are base coated in the mustard color also, keeping with the primary and secondary colors that we have. You can always paint them a uh, different color. It's a good rule of thumb to stick to as few colors as possible. Uh, like well, major colors. So I've got basically two major colors here. I have this gray and this green. I have a couple of these darker gray areas, but it's mostly on the backside and mechanical bits. So I would say the green or the mustard and my dark dark gray are the more dominant areas. Okay. Now we'll get to weathering the engine block and the smokestack. You can see I kind of went ahead and did some dots of silver and some light gray on those bolts just to add a little bit more definition. Nothing real major. Like I said, that's just a quick grab in the paint and then a dab. Nothing sophisticated there. I do need to fix one of the bolts. You can tell this bottom right hand corner it would be my bottom left hand corner. Slightly messed up. I'm gonna use the camera to get a good view and just clean it up like that and run the brush over the whole thing while I'm at it. And then dry it off the brush using the dry brush to kind of manipulate the water around and hit it one last time while wow, there's a little bit of water. And that'll give you a nice crisp uh, edge mess with this one here. This panel I'm noticing has a little bit of hard edge. So I'm going to really cover that up and then go over it with black again. Or that line with black again. You can see I really dipped it in there. But I want to get that in there with black again. So just fine. While that's going and drying, we're going to go ahead and start to weather up back end of the engine. We'll be very careful when weathering this model. Very careful because oh, the front part is perfect. I don't want any weathering on that front part. And I'm looking at that and I need to get a black line in there. It's gonna be right there. Yeah, I see. Cool. So I got a couple uh, panels to fix. Usually I'd go to town with this stuff. You've seen me do this before. It'll be very, very um, conservative with this black. I don't know if it'll focus on there. But a very small amount on there. Probably barely see. Dip it in the water a bunch of times because I want this water down really well. And hitting just this gas tank basically.
keeping it off the majority of the front, of course. Making sure not to tip the model so that it flows that way, of course. Just drop a line down and then push it around. Try not to swirl the brush too much because that will create bubbles and you don't want bubbles. I'm going to leave the smokestack and to do that separately. Get the paint to run though. Just like that there. And kind of work it around the solid parts. Okay. And now we'll do real heavy, real, real heavy on the smokestack. Put a great deal of it on the brush. And then water it all down really well. Make sure you can see that in the frame. Because this thing is absolutely going to be atrocious. It's going to have smoke coming out of it all the time. It's going to always be dirty. You can clean this thing after every use if you'd want to. And I bet you anything it would still be dirty after every single time you started this thing back up. Dirty that up just like that. Tipping the model down now. I'm trying not to stick the sword in the black paint, that would be helpful. And smoke would be rising. That's why I have it upside down. You really probably can't see this. Because, yeah, I have the smoke sack pointed downward. I'm going to really overload the brush with water. Because smoke would be rising, and I want the effect of rising. So obviously, tipping the model will get the paint to run down. But when it's dry, it will run up, if you understand that. It looked like it was running up. And that is the desired effect you're after. Just like that there. Now, it's all pretty wet and runned. Take your finger, I like using finger. Your finger has a really good amount of texture to it. Get the macro on. I'm gonna use the texture in my fingerprint to really carefully, let's see if I can get it really close, dab. This will create a smoky tinge. Just like that. Cool. I'll fill this back on because it was working fairly well. Awesome. So, making sure most of that's done running real fast. So I can set it down. It looks like for the majority of it is done. I've seen a couple spots I need to bounce my finger on a little bit. Got some kind of bit of fuzz there. But. There we go. Super. And that would be that. Let's have a look at the engine block. See how that looks? Awesome. Looks all nice and dirty. Oiled, oiled up, smoked up. Super. Dab my finger on that spot there, just there. Anywhere you've got a lot of paint built up, the black, you just want to dab your finger. Or any other piece. I mean, you probably could use a brush. Um, I like to use my finger because I get a good amount of control out of it. This uh, line here needed to fix. And, of course, that one I messed up earlier. I didn't suppose I, I, didn't suppose I messed it up, but I overfilled it on purpose. 
Let's take the brush and see how it looks on camera. Let's see. Okay, I see it. Take the brush and really carefully. Need less paint even than this. Really carefully knock that edge out. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then we'll get this inner one. Move him closer to the frame. Knock that inner one. Maybe we'll hit this one again since we've got some paint on the brush, of course. Just like that there. Now we'll come back with the base coat gray and just clean it up, final cleanup on that. And I think I got a nice blob of the weathering on there. I did. Just gonna rub my finger over that and we can cover that right now with the gray since we're going there. 16 minutes and crap. I'll cut this video. Thanks guys for watching. Cheers.